Well, hello. Oh, I'm muted. Am I muted? Okay. <laughs> I hope I'm not muted. But hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another wonderful installment of A Different World, HBCU Geeks. And I am just so proud and excited to have these esteemed guests here. Um, I would like to first introduce my co-moderator for the evening, um, the wonderful Professor Teodros Makeshua, Chair of the Fine and Performing Arts Department at Bowie State University, and also the creator of the Visual Communication and Digital Media Arts Program, which falls under that department. How are you doing today, Professor Teo? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you. Thanks. Good. Happy to be here. Thank you. So before we begin, since this is a special program for Black History Month in, co in collaboration with the VCDMA program and the Department of Fine and Performing Arts, why don't you talk a little bit about um, what those programs are for and um, how it ties in a little bit to the geek community, and then we'll just dive right in. All right. Thank you. So again, thank you all for, for being here. So VCDMA, Visual Communication, Digital Media Arts, it's a long word, long acronym, but we are a new Bachelor of Science degree and we have concentrations in uh, animation and motion graphics, digital cinema and time-based media, advertising design, fashion design, digital media arts. I gotta remember, remember them all sometimes. We also <laughs> are, are really happy about having, uh, for what I think, I, still, I think we're still the first HBCU with a minor in hip hop studies and visual culture. And so that, that's really exciting, as well as museum studies. But then we have a beautiful, just some beautiful programs in theater arts, uh, including acting and directing, dance and movement studies, music, music technology, uh, studio art. And I, I can't forget all my wonderful colleagues in the DFPA. And so, yeah, this, this is really great. And, and again, for, for me, uh, as a blurred bleak beak, whatever you call it, <laughs> black nerd, black geek, whatever you want to call it, um, I've been teaching a course uh, in hip hop studies called Visual Culture. And, and this is the one course that we actually focus on uh, cosplay, Afrofuturism, sci-fi, and uh, just this whole community of, of geekdom. And we're really excited to connect with HBCU Con. Yay, and we're excited to partner with you. So before we get off on that, um, before we dive too much into that subject matter, we'll definitely be coming back to that. And shout out to all the Bowie students who are watching BSU. You know I love you to death. But um, let's introduce our panelists. And I guess we will start with, let's go in um, alphabetical order <laughs> to keep things a little more organized with the internet. Um, the first question I would like to ask you all and feel free to introduce yourselves in doing so is who are you and what is your passion? Let's start with Fantastic Frankie. And then from there, we'll go to David Hooker, um, Miss Skittles, and Venture Bros. Hi, everyone. My name is Fantastic Frankie, Frankie Smith. Um, I attended Bennett College, you know, way back. Um, big, big, big time HBCU fan. Um, and right now, I am a content creator. I focus on nerd content, comics, and anime. And I connect it to my experience as a Black woman consuming this content and I just kind of inject my own flavor in the reviews of it and things like that. Um, that was everything, right? CC, you asked anything else? Yeah. I think that's, I mean, you, it could be an elevator speech or not, whichever. I'm so used to, <laughs> I'm so used to having 10 seconds to say what I gotta say. <laughs> oh, it's all good. We got time today, but it's okay. We got a lot of wonderful questions to ask you all as well. So um, David, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Sure. Uh, be as you, as you had, uh, you prompted me. I was saying it while I was muted. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, my name is David Hooker, uh, alum of Bowie State University circa uh, 2008. Mm -hmm. um, back when I think it might have been either one of the early years of the VCDMA program. Um, <laughs> it's actually where I met my wife. Anyway, um, I am... Currently, I work at uh, the Walt Disney Corporation. Uh, I'm an associate product manager there where I work on our websites um, and a lifelong geek um, and have been able to leverage, you know, those passions and things obviously into this career field as well as um, with other activations and, and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, my passion is, uh, wow, 
that is a that is a loaded question, but my passion is really uh, putting using compelling storytelling to make this place better, right? Um, and this place being our world, our experiences, and all of that, right? So, um, and I, I've been trying to leverage that in, um, in various ways and capacities, including uh, the work we do with HBCUs mm -hmm. and trying to get more work um, and pipelines from HBCUs to uh, the Walt Disney Corporation and other large uh, entertainment corp companies. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm working on. That's what we're doing right now. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, go ahead, Miss Skittles. Everyone, um, my name is Tiffany Richardson, um, also known as Miss Skittles. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see, um, I originally attended uh, Virginia State University, VSU. Mm -hmm. um, for about a year and a half, I was initially in the um, visual communi communications program, uh, which is now the art and design program. Um, but before, uh, before um, moving on to a different school, um, I, I knew my passion <laughs> long, long before going to college, I knew my passion was uh, just being a creative in general. Um, I, I love the arts, everything about the arts from, um, from just being creative and into using different mediums um, and how you express yourself creatively. Uh, so, um, what am I doing right now? I am <laughs> currently a full-time graphic designer, um, part-time cosplayer, uh, part-time, well, full, kind of full-time, <laughs> full-time co-founder of uh, Urban Anime Lounge, and part-time co-host of Third Spectrum <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> so, uh, a lot going on, but, um, you know, uh, just making it work and, and expressing myself creatively every day is, is what I'm passionate about doing. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes. Yeah. A lot of times I'm like, why am I so tired? And then yeah. <laughs> you start listening to all the stuff you're doing. You're like, oh, I'm doing like five different jobs. <laughs> That's a lot. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most of Venture Bros, who are you and what is your passion? Wow, these are some tough acts to follow, you know? Like, oh, man. <laughs> You know, uh, but um, so my name is Alan. Um, everyone calls me Venture Bros. Um, pretty much, uh, I was joined the military right out of high school, and uh, then I went to Hampton University. I uh, got my degree in nursing. Um, after that, uh, went back into the military as a commissioned officer. Then um, I got another degree from Macon State for healthcare administration. Um, my passion, I would say anything in the creative arts, anything that helps me express myself creatively, uh, right now it's strongly cosplay growing up, it was drawing and writing, but as an, you know, as an older adult, I finally learned what cosplay was and, uh, I dove all the way in. Mm -hmm. Uh, so cosplay has been a big inspiration of mine and it's allowed me to teach and help others like help children you know, kind of express themselves in a nerdy way with cosplay. And I could teach them that not only is it like something for nerds, but you can play sports and still do cosplay and still be a nerd. And it's all, you know, you can be accepted in all those walks of life. So that's been pretty much my passion for the past few years. That's beautiful. That's something that I think that we really strive for at HBCU Con is that is fighting that narrative that particularly for Black people, is that we're constantly forced into a box um, or you can't um, be more than one thing. You can't be multifaceted, whereas that is a privilege that is often allowed to other races of, um, of people. So it's just wonderful to see you all and how well-rounded you are in your various, um, in your various endeavors. Mm -hmm. So let's move it along. And um, I was going to ask you all what HBCUs you attended, but you all kind of already answered that question. Um, but what was it that like prompted you to attend the HBCU? Because I know for some people like me, it kind of happened by accident. Um, Bowie was really the only HBCU I applied to for undergrad. And um, 
it just so happened that I was awarded a scholarship. So I was like, oh, I'm going where the money's going. And my father <laughs> went to Bowie, my aunt went to Bowie. So we already had that like family establishment there. Um, but what was it that was so compelling for you all in making your decisions to um, attend to HBCU? Uh, well, for me, it kind of fell in my lap because uh, I did my first four years enlisted and then the military was like, hey, we'll send you to college real quick because you mm -hmm. got these scores. So like go to college and then just come back in. And my cousin, he was graduating high school around the same time I got done with my second tour in Afghanistan. So mm -hmm. it, it made perfect sense. He had a full ride football scholarship to Hampton University. Mm -hmm. So it was like I was going to get stationed at Langley. So I was like, that's that's perfect. We'll both go to college at the same time and, you know, go ahead and, you know, help each other out. So, you know, it's kind of how it happened for me. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, my sister was in an HBCU as well. She went to Norfolk State. Mm -hmm. um, and then I did like college tours um, the year before I like applied. So that kind of put me on and I've chosen Bennett um, because when I did the college tour, I was going to a co-ed school and stuff like that. And um, there was just something there about Bennett's one of the only um, all-female HBCU with the exception of Spelman. It's actually older than Spelman, you know, mm -hmm. small flex. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> throw that out there, y'all. Just throw that out there. Uh, right. Original sisters of Morehouse because Spelman didn't exist. But um, either way. Um, oh, wow. I went down there and I just remember speaking to someone and she was just talking to me because I, I was gifted and I was doing well in school. Yeah. And she was like, hey man, you could go to one of these temple. I think I've been wanting to go to temple. She was like, you go to temple with all these white folks. Um, and she was like, oh, you can let us raise you for a couple of years and like you really learn how to kind of go into the workforce and be fostered by a black person. And mm -hmm. she almost insinuated too to kind of learn how to navigate um, black people, which I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I had some difficulty with, especially as a teenager. Mm. Um, and, you know, it kind of sold me like, yo, you know, she sold that, like, be a star and maybe a smaller pond and, and get that one-on-one -on -one attention. Mm. And yeah, I mean, it definitely, it definitely was worth it. I was on SGA and stuff and I got to meet like Nikki Giovanni and people like that. And just, just things that I, I wouldn't have been able to really interact, people I wouldn't be able to interact with if I was at a bigger university, you know? I just kind of be drowned out. That's real, that's real. So mine was uh, completely by accident as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> following my best friends, <laughs> uh, I, I literally applied, I applied to VCU, uh, VSU, mm -hmm. and the Art Institute of Washington. Um, and all three of us got into BSU, so I was like, oh, we going, we going to HBCU, why not? Uh, <laughs> and, and that's literally how I ended up at Virginia State. So, uh, I mean, uh, doing a campus visit, of course, it was just like, oh my God, like, you know, mm -hmm. it's a, like it's a college just for Black people. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, um, so yeah, it, it was, um, it was definitely um, just, I went, yeah, it was an accident. Understood, understood. <laughs> Hooker, I'm gonna call you Hooker now, cause yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> we call him Hooker, and we'll get into that in a minute <laughs> as to how you got that name. <laughs> it was, it was gonna happen anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, so my experience is is a little different. It is a little by accident, um, and a little. Uh, little choice. So I went to uh, Flowers High School in mm -hmm. Fiji County, um, uh, gorgeous Prince George's, and I was uh, under the great direction of all of my principals had went to HBCUs, and I, the, mm -hmm. our principal and all our vice principals had went to HBCUs, and like there was such this push for us to go to school, um, get scholarships, and go to school, right? Mm -hmm. um, and in my head, when I was when I was in school, when I was in high school, my head was, I'm, I should go to an Ivy League school. It was this prestige behind like these <laughs> Ivy Leagues, right? And like, so you, you think, and then I realized um, my grades uh, don't match uh, the idea <laughs> that I had towards going to these, HB, these Ivy League schools, especially when you compare it to some of the kids who are sitting around with like a four point, like I wasn't, I wasn't skimping, you know, I was in the honor roll and all that good stuff, but 
I didn't have a 4.5 and 4.34, like a lot of those students who would be able to be eligible to get to these schools, right? Um, and I also found out that we didn't have the money to be putting me in on a partial scholarship, right? So I applied to a couple of HBCUs, uh, uh, I think St. Aug, um, uh, Bowie, um, and I was also looking at like a band scholarship because uh, Bowie came to our school um, with a band and I was, I was like, oh, okay. Uh, I was in band and I was like, okay, this, this might, might be a good look. Um, so fast forward, um, I put in my applications to all these different schools and then I found like Syracuse who had like a cinematic, depart- a cinematic, cinematic program. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was what I, like my, my heart was set on. And then if Sure enough, I saw a, a post, uh, a article about them having like this uh, black, um, black face party at the school. And I was like, nah, fam, that can't, that's not it. I can't do it. Uh, <laughs> it's not it funny. Like, oh. It's more of a nervous laugh, really. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So um, that and, you know, the pricing and all of that stuff, uh, needless to say, um, when I came back to it, it ended up being who was giving me the most money to go to school. Um, and Bowie offered me a full academic scholarship mm-hmm. um, compared to these other schools. And I was able to turn that around and be able to be extremely active at the university and be able to be, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in fully invested in school because I wasn't tied down to the fact that, oh, God, these finances are killing me. So mm-hmm. um, I highly suggest that to all students, you know, that they, they go looking for uh, where the free money is at, get that um get those scholarships, get those grants, get the, utilize those opportunities. Um, but that was what led me to uh, ultimately going to Bowie. I did not do a lot of research about HBCUs initially. I, you know, I knew they existed, um, right. but when I got there, it was a whole new world, just like this panel. And uh, it has been nothing but a pleasure uh, uh, to, to see all of the nuggets and how they have impacted me uh, along the way. So. Thanks. It was it was unexpected, but it was great. <laughs> right, right. A beautiful surprise, right? Um, so let me ask you all a little bit about um talk about what was your HBCU experience like? Um, and particularly as a geek on campus so like maybe like talk about how uh the experience may have changed you did it encourage you to be a geek or did did it deter you in some ways did you um did you find a tribe like were there other blurds or geeks who were on the yard who you may have um met with um what clubs and organizations you may have been involved in and what the geek life may or may not have geek life may or may not have been like within those organizations. Um, so whoever wants to go first, I mean. <laughs> yeah, um, I always, and looking back, I wish I didn't do it as much, but for me, college was always like a job. You know what I mean? Like I spent mm-hmm. that whole time grinding, um, getting ready to go. I did like internships in the summer. Um, I was like, I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna be Miss Bennett. I was in last year. So, I never had time to really join like social groups with the exception of, um, I'm in Alpha Kappa Alpha, sorry, Incorporated, of course, which is way more than a social group. You you may know. um, (laughs) No, 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 I'm joking. You know what What? I'm saying? Uh, But no, um, either way, um, like my nerd side was definitely something I did on the low, on the hush to the point where Mm -hmm. like people from college will hit me, like recently found my page and they're like, yo, you doing this, fu-? like, I didn't even know, like, my line sister hit me up, and I found out she likes Star Wars, and I was like, sis, what? <laughs> like, I know, I know your, like, whole family's name, and I didn't know that you had this thing, um, and at Ben and, and A&T, we kind of in the same school, there weren't really that many clubs there, and I guess, the HBCU life was so consuming, the nerd life kind of took a backseat. So I would do it, especially when I went home, I'd watch some stuff, or I'd watch some things, maybe on the side, with whoever I was dating, I'd like try to slide it in. Um, but it was definitely like on the back burner, because like being at an HBCU was an experience on its own, mm. that I wanted to immerse myself in. So like, you know, yeah, no, you someone talking about the band, you know what I'm saying? Something's going on in the quad. Um, you could randomly be in your, in your dorm room and somebody just, I don't know how it is now. Well, 
before COVID. But like, I, you could be in your door room, knock on the door, somebody at, the, at your door, you don't know who it is. And now you're hanging out for the day. So like, right. you know, anime and stuff like that. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. Like, right. don't call, don't text. And I, I had a Blackberry. So it wasn't that we weren't moving. Right. Um, but, you know, it, oh, it, so it was just too unpredictable. And y'all, yeah, no, no. I had an orange one, though. It's fine. Everybody had a Blackberry, regardless yeah, if you had a business. Back right there, them Blackberries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it had pictures. You could take photos on there. Don't play with me. <laughs> True. Mm-hmm. The Blackberries was ruining some relationships too. <laughs> Y'all don't even want to get into the church because the church and alert. Oh, yeah. Yes. Without without <laughs> your consent, you'll hear. Uh, where you at? You right. Who <laughs> is that chirping you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow. Um. <laughs> I guess I could follow up. I think, you know, in, in similar fashion, right? Like um, things sort of just naturally happen on campus. And I think uh, when I got to school uh, at Bowie, um, we uh, we were in uh, the honors dorm, right? And so mm-hmm. my sort of tribe existed out of that uh, honors suite because my, my freshman year, actually, we, did, we were in basically an all female dorm and there was only like, a, you know, one floor of boys on the I think on the sixth floor and then we had our one little honor suite of, of guys and so that sweet room sort of became our hub of sort of like geekdom right it was a bunch of nerdy uh academic you know scholarship uh students and we uh naturally some of us had some similar interests and in like either it was on the tech side or you know stem or things like that um, but it just, it grew from there because we realized, you know, we all had similar interests and like video games was, was big. And so it mm-hmm. got to the point where I, that our suite was sort of known for, for that, like um, that sort of geeky, like chill hangout spot. It was like that, that was where folks were able to like express themselves in that way without, without fear of judgment or anything like that. And I think that was what, um, that's what drew a lot of people to that to that space so you would find those people that you wouldn't expect to be there just come by and hang out and they'll you know they'll come in and be like, oh snap what game is this they pop in and start playing there's jrpgs going on there's there's constantly people watching like anime people cooking ramen in the background you're like what <laughs> is this room uh, <laughs> but uh, uh that's that's where uh where it, it, it grew organically for us, right? But I think there was some intention behind the fact that we want people to be okay being okay, right? It's like, whatever mm-hmm. you're really into, just just do you, right? You know, just horticulture, be <laughs> be gangster in your horticulture, but, you know, do <laughs> do it and, and feel confident that no one's going to come in here and judge you based on, on any of that. And that was, that was the, like, sort of uh, uh, really therapeutic nature of that, that suite and that group. Um, so uh that that's what it was for me now outside of that you know we stepped out and and there was you know sort of focus or interest and it was kind of hidden I do mm-hmm. wish um I wish I, I wish I, I could see what it's like nowadays on campuses uh you know once we get past this COVID thing <laughs> to see uh just how organic or how how much uh how embraced this geek culture has become because I know it's become a lot more mainstream than it was the years and years ago when I was in school, right? So I'm curious about that. Yeah, it's funny you bring that up because I keep forgetting that you live in California now. So you haven't been able to like just pick up and drive to campus and go visit. Like, you know, when I would, when I meet Professor Teal when we have our meetings and stuff. Um, and even when I went to The whole reason why I even went back to campus, um, aside from uh, just trying to make things happen with HBCU Con was I had gotten wind that the students there, the Campus Activities Board had started their own convention called Otaku Con. And it was basically a little anime convention that they had for this, especially for the students. They had a maid cafe, they had a Smash (laughs) Brothers tournament, and it was all in the huge, it was in the um, new student center. So imagine the Sweet 200, but it was like 150 kids, <laughs> you know, I mean, students. It was crazy to see that. And, um, and I say that to say that, um, 
you know, David Hooker was one of the first friends that I made when I went to Bowie. He graduated 2008 and I graduated 2009. So when I came as a freshman, him and Marcus were ready, like at the ready, like, hey, she looks like one of us. So we're going to just go ahead and indoctrinate her real quick. And um, and the rest is history. And I and I wound up bringing other people in as well. And the Sweet 200 experience, you know, our experience at Alex Haley Hall really is what motivated me to found HBCU Con, and it is ultimately what um, it is ultimately the blueprint for this organization. Um, so before I get too in my feelings about that, um, Miss Skittles, please tell us a little bit about your experience. Um, so in, in college, well, particularly at BSU, um, the art, the visual arts program was. Uh, I would say at the time pretty small. So majority of my classmates, we were all in the same class classes together. <laughs> um, so in in a sense, in class, that was my tribe. But outside of class, because I I had so many uh, friends from home also attending uh, VSU, I, I was like a split personality, like. In, in class, I was, you know, the geek that I am now. <laughs> and then outside of class, I was, you know, cool tip. Like, what, what y'all talking about? Like, I don't, I don't do them things. Like, <laughs> yeah, that cool uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> oh. so I, I mean, I wish, I, like, like you guys were saying, I hope, I'm hoping that um, there's, there's a, a sense of, you know, bigger community now for, for Black nerds, um, especially with us being so mainstream. Um, and, you know, I'm super um, excited or, or thrilled to know that uh, BSU ha has these type of programs that I wish, you know, were available when I was in school um, because, that that sense of community would have probably would have probably would have helped me to stay at Virginia State. Mm -hmm. um, so, with the, with the program being so small, I just felt like it, it just wasn't enough for me, and that's what prompted me to um, leave Virginia State and attend mm -hmm. the Art Institute. Mm -hmm. um, and that community in itself it, i mean it's the art institute it was it was, it was full of blur, uh, nerds blurs like it was it was a regular right <laughs> nerd show so right. um so yeah i'm i'm glad that uh bsu is mm -hmm. is opening you know more avenues for for people like us uh Absolutely. And we're going to talk more about that in a minute. I want to give Venture Bros a chance to talk. I don't know if you had already chimed in about your experience yet. Oh, uh, no. Um, it's a lot of talking going on. Yeah, yeah, I'm well invested in these stories now, you know. Right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, let me think. At Hampton, see, it's weird. I feel like it's levels to nerd stuff. So when I was at Hampton, you know, Iron Man 1 had already come out. Captain America came out. So you got people who aren't like real big in, in nerd culture, but they'll watch Marvel movies or they'll be gamers. Cause every, you know, like even with anime, you, I got, I know a lot of every new, I knew watch DBZ, but they wouldn't know anything about like other deeper titles like Ninja Scroll or right. anything like that. But the, everybody watched DBZ and like everybody played, you know, like Smash Brothers or Marvel versus Capcom. Like mm -hmm. I remember those times where I even had like, dates who would like be waiting on me and they would watch us game while they were waiting for us to go out somewhere you know so it's people who would have like layers of nerddom but they wouldn't be like real deep in right. so while I was in college I never experienced like a, um an anime group or anything like that there was nothing like that at HU when I was there mm -hmm. so but now they actually do have an anime club so I'm kind of like dang I wish they had that when I was there mm -hmm. you know and uh and even like in Greek culture, like I don't see a lot of people like repping nerd stuff. But if 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 you do happen to see somebody with like a Dragon Ball poster or a Naruto poster, you're like, hey, you watch anime? 
It's like, yeah, I watch anime. And it's like, okay, then you start vibing and then you start talking. But unless that happens, it's like nobody knows each other's nerves, you right. know? So, I mean, my experience was like, it was limited. It was like more so of gaming and like the movies. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah sure. I think it's interesting you mentioned like when a Greek person sees someone else, because I always treat it like, Nilia, like if I'm wearing a shirt right. or something subtle that's like anime or co- like I have a Thanos, um, it's like all of his rings kind of bracelet thing. And if someone oh, okay. recognizes it, it's the same as if I was walking around with my AKA lanyard hanging back. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> Where it's like subtle. It's like, hey, if they recognize the flag, all right, all right. right. Just having a little pill taste. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was. I, when I remember at my graduation, Avengers came out. The very first Avengers came out, like on my graduation mm-hmm. day. Um, and yeah, it was the same thing. Like as the movies were coming on, and like if I went on the day or with someone who was like getting into the movies, mm-hmm. I'd be like trying to throw in some stuff without like revealing. Right. You know right, what I'm right. saying? <laughs> it's, it's like when you're around yeah, white people. Tell. Yeah, you could tell right. if they read the comics or something, you know. <laughs> right, but you're not it's trying like, to like, oh, let them know. Let them know. Casual, right? I ain't even gonna say no more. That's a casual right there. <laughs> right, exactly. So you see something and you say, "Oh, that's." I'm like, you know, right? He look cool, right? Okay, okay, okay. Because you're not you're not trying to be the one with your friends or with your LBs or your LSs that you're sitting there and you're right. like actually. Uh, I don't know why they made that choice because in the comics, blah, 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 so they can look at you <laughs> like you. Crazy. They all gonna look at the, you. You might get roasted real quick, like that. Hey, like yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I already went through Hell Week, uh, so I'm done. But it's, it's funny, funny because that, now, now I'm thinking of different occasions. I remember when uh, Avatar got dropped. And I brought mm-hmm. something up about M Night Shyamalan. I'm like, man, his movies are always either real good or they trash. And they looked at me like, you know, directors now? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> who are you? Why are y'all coming? But from I'm, the that's what I'm saying. Uh, da- David mentioned it, that it's the second layer of code switching. So we're code switching for our white counterparts, right? Mm-hmm. Where like you hear a rap song and you're like, wow, that language is obscene. And you try to make it seem like you ain't never, you ain't never really listened. And it's the right. same thing with your black colleagues or like, they're like, look at all these people dressing up. Like, I remember people would come in and be like, yo, you see all those people like dressed up like characters? I'm like, they time in October to like mm-hmm. secretly go with my pops. So it's just, it's just very funny to like how, like as black nerds, now they could wear, they got all this cool street wear that mm-hmm. I wear too, but still, I'm like, they didn't have that when I was in college. Yeah. I, you had that terrible silk Goku button-up shirt, okay? And that was <laughs> good. That's all y'all had. Like, so, like some of the kids I mean, I'm into. It's like, different. Like, yeah, yeah. Now it's like totally cool because they'll call out something in a heartbeat. Like, there are kids I mentor. And uh, one time I was like, hey, man, you guys can't, once you guys are starting to work out, you're getting stronger, you can't, you can't just get in the fights with other kids because, you know, when great, Power comes a great responsibility. Mm-hmm. And one of the kids was like, that's Spider-Man. And I was like, <laughs> hey, but, but it makes sense. And, you know, 10 years ago, I would have got called out for that. Right, it'd be something so profound, like, oh, this right, man's right. Oh, a man, pioneer, you know? But now, no, nah, man. One of the kids was like, that, that's Spider-Man. And I was like, oh, damn. He tried to get him. I didn't know, I didn't know my material. He tried to get him a Miles Morales America. Right. <laughs> shout out to um, and I want I have some shout outs too. Cause speaking of Miles Morales, but the stigma of being a black nerd and and how that has changed is just crazy to me. Um, and even in ta- in conversations like I think the VCDMA program in particular has really brought out the nerds because now they have a program <laughs> that they can go like now there's a major for it like what do you major I major in Thanks for you like, that's what I major <laughs> in I major right. in fandom you know Afrofuturism <laughs> and all these various things and it was like I get it too um, having been you know being a member of Delta Sigma Theta like my alias was the original overachiever like I started out as the overachiever but then now 
there's like a lineage where there's an overachiever on each line now. And it started with me. So <laughs> the, it went kind of from my line sisters and my pro fights going from, oh, there goes that weird, you know, we love Chana, but there she go, you know, being her weird self with David Hooker again, or mm-hmm. Natasha Hooker, whoever. Um, and now it's like, that's my line sister dressed in that costume looking weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and um, yeah. And, and like now, you know, my line sister Tomika, she's on our team. Um, the chair of OtakuCon that I was talking about earlier, Tyra, she's our director of marketing. Ola Tunde Floyd, who is a student at the VCDMA program, is in charge of our um, program coordination. So it's just really amazing to see how it's all like that seed that we we kind of planted back when we were on the yard has just blossomed into this beautiful thing. And I, w- I think this is a perfect time to loop in Professor Tio um, to talk a little bit more about the VCDMA program. And I want to bring up the question that I had. So you mentioned earlier, Professor Tio, mm-hmm. that the visual communication and digital media arts program um, includes concentrations and in courses in industries such as animation, motion graphics and film, fashion design, including costume design, hip hop studies, which is an actual minor at the university, Afrofuturism and gaming. So um, can you talk a little bit about that? And I also want you to also talk a little bit about your HBCU experience. Oh, can I talk about my HBCU experience? Yes, please do. Please do. <laughs> please do. Let's start there. How about we start there? I know you just brought it. I'm like, y'all, no, and, and this also, I'm listening to you guys and, and kind of the generational thing, right? Uh, which right. is amazing. So, so my background, I went to Morgan State University undergrad, uh, my mother went to Virginia Tech, and I went to Morgan State University undergrad. So my background, I went to Morgan State University undergrad. Uh, my mother went to Virginia State, so we could talk about that. Blue and, blue and, blue and orange, still, still the same, still the same love. Uh, <laughs> but no, but just, and I had an opportunity to, uh, you know, go on. I, I'm, a, I'm a 90s, 80s kind of brother. So mm-hmm. so I, my my era was was through hip hop and through music. I got my, got my Wu shirt on. And so mm-hmm. I'm sitting here kind of reminiscing through all of you all. I'm like, yeah, I had a different experience, except we didn't have this community, right? We didn't have HBCU kind of, we didn't, I was a nerd and a geek and I didn't know it, right? So, mm-hmm. so it's really exciting mm-hmm. to kind of see this now. But yes, in VCDMA, and I and I and I don't I cannot forget our other programs like advertising design. We have like five concentrations. So if I forget one, please forgive me. Uh, digital mm-hmm. media arts, and really, even as a student at Morgan State, I was really heavily into animation, science fiction, and and all all things weird and nerdy back then. But again, music has always been that that core to t- to connect everything, especially hip hop and mm-hmm. and reggae and and house music and go go and everything else. And so yeah. those are the kind of yeah. things that we plug in into <laughs> our, our our visual culture uh, course um, that that I'm teaching. And just really um, this experience. What I'm excited about is not only this community of of geeks not, or nerds. We have a place to go to go to, but this can be plugged into actual careers, uh, whether it be mm-hmm. with, what David is doing with Disney. Um, theater arts, you know, the visual arts, fashion, costume. And so you get paid for this nerddom. You can get paid for being a geek. I have a 13 year old and I'm like, the, the nerds and the geeks, son, if they're, if they're bullying you, they're picking you. All, all, the, all the geeks and the nerds are millionaires right now, okay? Everybody they get picked on, you know, they're gonna be the next person to create the next uh-huh. industry. So be a, be, a, be a nerd, be a geek. But yeah, but, but, but <laughs> plugging it to sort of what we're trying to do now at, at VCD and in an entire de- department of fine and performing arts is mm-hmm. create these avenues for, uh, not only geekdom, but but really business and entrepreneurship. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, every, when I look at, and I'm not a cosplayer, but the the amount of detail that I see in cosplay, I'm like, oh, these folks would be some dope special effects artists and costume designers and visual mm-hmm. artists. There's so much artistry that you all do that I really respect. And so, so and that's the way I, I'm, I'm very interested in kind of plugging this into our fashion costume design program, uh, where we have uh, fashion design, we're trying to develop costume design, which is, and we're connected to the theater arts at the hip with that. And right. to get our students into those careers in terms of not only costume, makeup, visual effects, special right. effects. Uh, we're starting, we, we're getting ready to move into gaming and virtual reality and things like that. I'm partnering with computer science or some things to develop a, a program. But the other key thing that I want to plug is, is entrepreneurship. And, and I say that in the sense that you know, our new president, wonderful Dr. Bro, our first woman president in 153 years, I think, um, she's really trying to push entrepreneurship. So I'm trying to get our students to think about this, these, these things that we think of, of nerd them or geek them could actually be possible careers, could be, uh, 
you know, think whether it's in the arts or in music or in theater or in business or communications. Uh, but yeah, the, the thing that the ultimate thing I wanted to call, kind of talk about is is the amount of great uh, uh, nerdum that that is that we see in film and, and video and animation and game design that that has that came from HBCUs. Uh, we were blessed to have uh, Ruth Carter come a couple of years ago and gave her an award. You know, Ruth Carter is a went to Hampton. Of course, the wonderful designer of black costume designer for Black Panther and every other great Spike Lee film out there. But just the, yeah. I mean, for, for Black <laughs> Panther so stuff. God rest, you know, Chadwick Boseman. And yeah. it's even weird. Yeah. Like I used to, it's, it's just hanging. I went to Morgan, but I would hang in, you know, I'm from, from I'm from the area. <laughs> so I would come back, I would come back uh, down here to hang out with my Howard people. And right. I, I would remember say, I don't, like I would be around and Chad, we were on U Street. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I remember Chad when he was, you know, doing poetry. So all of these great, and God rest the brother's soul, but they're all <laughs> great connections that are, that, that came out of the HBCU experience. And I, and I, and I just say that everyone needs to, to really, you know, to really, uh, you know, focus on that and how, how beautiful it is to have that experience. I, I see it now, reliving it through you all um, and even with my, with my current students. And uh, but it's, it's just amazing. And so, again, it's about creating community. It's about talking about possible industries and that a lot of these these things can actually translate into just some wonderful things. And what you're doing, Brother Allen, I mean, with, with working with young people and, and children and using this as a way to, to build up their spirits. I think it's it's a it creates kind of what David also mentioned, it creates these safe places. And that's what we want to create, yeah. you know, here at the university, a safe place. You won't be judged if it's race, gender, religion, spiritual, whatever you're, who you, what you look like does not matter in the world of geekdom. And I would say, exactly. and in Afrofuturism, but I'll get into that later. And, yes, um, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I want to, I want to piggyback on that. I'll just, just for a second, because the, sure. there's a real life, you know, example, real life scenario that I want people to have tangible takeaways because they'll hear these things and they go, oh, sure. You know, you say that, but like how many Ruth Carters have you run into and all of that, right? But right. Um, I give you the example, uh, as Chana mentioned, she came in a year after me. Uh, so did, um, who is now my counter counterpart, Natasha. She came in a year after me. She was in the VC uh, DMA program. She was angry as everybody else was when um, uh, uh, when Lang gave her a C on her, uh, <laughs> on her She was like, oh my gosh. And, so, yeah, but, um, and, and uh, doing doing art and being able to have that seed of, you know, uh, uh, of, the, of the craft, right? Mm -hmm. um, that came from HBCU, suppl supplanted with her geeky, you know, desire to be in games and, and like yes. that, was, that that ended up being her thing. She wanted to work in video games, right? Um, transitioned into her doing uh, doing programs at uh, Full Sail for game mm -hmm. art, right? So we have the VC uh, VCDMA is that that first you know piece of foundation, right? Mm -hmm. Getting those skills, moving through that, and then we went and started networking, right? So I would like to you know I, I know we'll we'll hinge on that networking piece a little later. Yes. But, after that networking, when we came out to the States, uh, to, to LA, we were able, uh, she was able to transition the grind and hustle of, you know, being at an HBCU and what that means, what that looks like, right? Mm -hmm. and with her passions and then, uh, co you know, coordinate that networking piece and finally got opportunity to start working in games, right? Yeah. So it came, it comes full circle. Mm -hmm. And so now this last, this past year, I don't know if you all know, there's a game that dropped um, and some of her art is in that game, uh, yeah. but it's Miles Morales Spider Man. So, you know, right. you get yeah. this full, you know, experience this happens, right? And just trying to make it tangible for students right. is what is like is a big passion of mine because it's like it can happen, guys. And it's like just because we haven't seen it or we haven't been in those rooms or opened those doors does right. not mean that it's not happening for groups of people. So, I just, you know, to share that like caveat, like this is a process that will get you actually to those places that you want to be. Facts. And I'm so glad that you um, lifted up Natasha Hooker's name. And I just love the way y'all love each other. It makes me so happy. Um, but <laughs> Natasha Lee Hooker, who is also part of our Sweet 200 um, cr crew or cult, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm just so blessed to see her and all the work that she's done. And not only just um, the Miles Morales game, all that Black Lives Matter art that y'all been putting in your cover photos, that's her. That's Natasha Lee Hooker. Um, mm -hmm. She also helped co-create Spider-Man 4, I believe Titanfall 2, and a number of other titles. She's currently at Insomniac, if I'm not mistaken. So, that is correct. Yep, this is real. And I think that it's important to just... Um, the one thing that I really think that we all want to take away from this is to 
follow your passion and to follow your heart and to you don't have to like when I was growing up the con especially in the DMV the common narrative is oh go to college get good grades and if you're lucky you'll get a good government job when you <laughs> when you graduate and yeah. I did that I did that I did we that you know I actually worked good yeah right everybody job. got triggered everybody got <laughs> triggered right <laughs> and I did that yeah. you know I I did the thing. I went. I worked at NIH actually under Dr. Fauci's leadership for about seven years. Um, so I did that, and it was cool. I'm thankful for all the experiences that I had, but I knew that I wanted something more out of it. And in us following our passions, we have all been able to build these huge movements in our own right and make incredible contributions that we don't even know the full scope of it yet. Um, just simply because you don't know how these things are going to impact our society until 20, 30, 40, 100 years down the line. So um, I really just want to lift that up. And in talking about the VCDMA program, um, what VCDMA skills do you all possess? And, um, and how has that helped you as a creator? And um, I guess whoever wants to go first. I know Frankie, you, do, you all are just doing so much when it comes to visual effects and um, costume design and um, everything, film. So please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wish, I wish, I wish <laughs> I I had a program like, what is it, the VC DMA program? Yes, I, yes. Y'all, I, I had, we had journalism and media studies, which I wasn't in that program because yes, I'm West Indian, I'm Afro-Latina. And there's no way in hell I could yeah. think, but a uh, doctor or lawyer. You get what I'm saying? So right. I went to college. <laughs> I went to. I got my master's. I did all that stuff, and then it was like to the point. It was a hobby that I started about two years ago, mm -hmm. um, not thinking it would be lucrative. Just something fun because I was watching things on YouTube and like reviews and stuff. And I was like, all these men doing reviews and like, did they never be hitting the points I'd be wanting to hear? And of course they won't. They're not going to hit it because they're not a woman. They're not a black woman. We, you don't, know? we don't see it how you see it. But exactly. Because <laughs> even the women, even the women. You got, you got a different perspective, you know. So It would be like Asian or white. And then I'm like, of course they don't know. You know, they're not going to ask about like, why the Starfire wig? effed up right. <laughs> you know, they're not gonna ask the real questions y'all they're not gonna ask the real questions so um i learned everything on what i call youtube university y'all and i wish i had someone like y'all so i learned how to edit i learned i just had in my mind what i wanted and then i just learned how to edit i learned like visual i learned about color palettes and stuff like that all through youtube and and, and everything and um, I think we have this unique opportunity where we deliver our stuff directly to the consumer. We don't need that many, that middleman to distribute our, our content. Mm -hmm. And um, so now I am doing it full time. And it's insane because it's like, you know, before I, I went to school for so long to make, you know, to make cheese. And then I was like, <laughs> if I would have known I could have did it off my own, I would have done that a lot earlier. Um, so I think there's an opportunity here to like, you know, if you have in your head, if you're creative, if you know, like, this is what I want to portray and it's in your mind, you have something like your head, you could put it out. However, like I started out putting it out on my cell phone um, and mm -hmm. then it grew, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know it's a lot. <laughs> no, nah, it's about. beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I think that, you know, it, it definitely can be done for you to do things on your own, but also at the same time. So there's that the balance of like taking your initiative and doing your own research, but also finding community, finding a mentor, being a mentor and how much, how important that really is um, as you navigate through these, um, you know, through these spaces. So um, Miss Skittles, why don't you take it away? Cause you have a plethora of VCDMA skills. Um, so, uh, where do, where do I start? Um, so be, be, being a, <laughs> in, an office, it, in general, starting, starting art at a young age and always knowing that I, I wanted to be an artist. I didn't know, I didn't know what I was going to do with my artwork, but I just know I, I was going to be creative. So uh, initially starting out, um, 
uh, just doing gen like real generalized art, like for everything from drawing to painting to sculpting to just all of that um, led led me to wanting, uh, well, actually gaming led me to want to be a game art designer. Um, unfortunately, life happens <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. I, I slowly, gradually turned that into um, uh, web publishing, uh, front, front end, mostly front end um, mm -hmm. uh, design, and then also graphic design. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 I love graphic design. <laughs> um, I so I'm trying to I'm trying to find a way to lead that into like all of the stuff that I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so as a graphic designer, um, I'm constantly looking at the world and and through the eyes of uh, everything like beautiful. Um, I just see things differently. I feel like I see things differently. Um, and I'm also uh, always wanting to just take what I see and then like put it on something, put it on a platform, put it on me, put put you know put it out to the public. Um, so um, being an artist, uh, I was actually afforded the opportunity to be an artist contributor for um, Urban Anime Lounge. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, at the time was just, you know, a Facebook group. But um, that, that me being an artist uh, led to um, the team just, you know, feeling like they wanted to include me in, in the further business part of, um, of UAL's branding. Mm -hmm. so, um, so now as a co-founder of Urban Anime Lounge, um, I've become part of something much bigger uh, a community, creating a community <laughs> um, for for people like us, um, and I'm able to. Uh, I, I mean, a lot of a lot of what I do as a graphic designer goes into UAO, um, and also goes into the Blurred Spectrum uh, mm -hmm. podcast. Um, I, I've created logos. Uh, I do <laughs> I do a lot of the social media graphics. Mm -hmm. um, the shirt <laughs> right so mm -hmm. like you know so it is my my artistry has has gone a lot further than I thought it would initially um because I just thought you know I'm gonna I'm gonna do art and you know because a lot of times when you're growing up they're like oh, you want to be what an artist what right it's <laughs> like, not a real job like, it's not a real job what gonna be about? a starving artist like yeah. what, what um and and here I am doing way more than I ever expected um and, and especially as a cosplayer this is this like turning turning art on, on paper into something physical for me mm -hmm. is like a whole different a whole different realm of creativity um mm -hmm. and I, I I really just hope that you know younger because because when I, when we were growing up, you know, nobody was, you know, nobody was like, oh, you should cosplay, like, no, right. or, or right. you should, you know, you should get in the game, and you know, that there's, right. you know, uh, no, nobody was saying that. So, mm -hmm. um, to be doing this now and and to to create a space um, for for us and and have other, you know, younger generations like us see us, you know, excelling at doing all of these uh, amazing things just just with art like it's just art that's so. beautiful <laughs> every five posts on instagram is miss skittles cosplay I'm like, oh man she got another one she just yeah, did another for real. one she's been cranking it out and and the group <laughs> projects um you know i had the pr privilege of being involved with a cosplay project with her and jay who's another co-founder of um urban anime lounge and my soror so it's just been really wonderful to um to create with you all and in the process of doing so I've been able to wit to bear witness to just how wonderfully and amazingly talented you all are like it really gets me emotional when I think about it um but I want to also give um Hooker and Venture Bros because you all are doing a lot of VC DMA stuff too both on and off the clock so um please by all means talk a little bit about that as well 
<laughs> oh, he leaving oh, the I, deep I, 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 I talk a lot. I was gonna give it to David because I know I'll be running my mouth. So <laughs> but, me too. You know. I have to sometimes I have to defer. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, I I don't know. I guess um, like you guys, similar to you guys, growing up, if doing anything nerdy never equaled out to making a living as far as what I was told. Mm -hmm. So being an artist or anything of that nature, it was like a crapshoot. Like you have to be extremely lucky, right time, right place, know the right people to mm -hmm. even remotely think that you could live a sustainable life if you wanted to be like a writer or an artist. So it just wasn't in the cards for my family. And like my mother was like, look, you got a, you got two routes. You can work for the government you can go into the military working for the government figure it out <laughs> so you know it was kind of like that and um until I want to say until like maybe four years ago four or five years ago I didn't really know that um how many opportunities that you could get if you actually tried through doing things like graphic design or writing or you know artistry you know um as far as for myself um doing cosplay like I would have never pictured myself being in a magazine for like anything maybe like the military times or something <laughs> like that but that's like it you know but like through cosplay through that creativity of building and like you know um different editing you know I've been in a few cosplay magazines and I would have never I think excelled at it at editing or using photoshop or anything of that nature until mm -hmm. Uh oh it got to the point where um like during covid i should say during covid i really had to like do a lot of editing myself and i never had that opportunity before i never even thought to do it mm -hmm. but then when i started editing my different cosplays i got better at it and uh again i've been able to teach others in chicago plc which is another group we created kind of to teach other black people in Chicago, especially young black people, but anyone's anyone's allowed to join. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll teach them how to build certain things through cosplay, how to build armor, how to build weapon props, you know, how to like um, edit and do design on their characters after they've taken pictures, how to take proper pictures with proper lighting. Mm -hmm. And these are skills I wouldn't have picked up unless I started cosplaying. Right. So I can only imagine how it would have gone if I would have, you know, grown up with that type of support system as far as like that, like, hey, you want to try this and see how it goes. And, you know, if you do like it, you can make a living off doing it. Right. You know, because yeah. I would have never thought you could work for Disney or Nickelodeon right. or, you know, get a college degree, you know, from these areas. I didn't even right. know it was college classes involved in it, you know. So it just really like woke me up when I started seeing, you know, other black people do it. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. most deaf. Go ahead, Hooker. I'll let you take it no, away. No, no, I was, I was just going to say, it, you know, when you talk about all the things you didn't know that were, you know, opportunities, were hidden like opportunities that exist, that, I mean, that, that's totally true. And I think, you know, I was going to, I was going to pinpoint some of the skills that exist out of the VCDMA programs or out of the mm -hmm. HBCU experience um, that really align with some of the everyday stuff that, that I do, you know, on it, at a corporation, right? Um, but one of the biggest ones is like that hustle, right? Like the, yeah. the grind that you learn to do, the, you, you know, you trying to get a, get that degree um, and you trying to pass those uh -huh. classes and there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a hustle there. There's like a, a drive, right? And that, that, that problem solving, right? I, I problem solve every day I'm at work, right? I work with product. And so I've worked with some engineers and there's an issue that's going on. And so they may need to pivot. And then I have to explain that to some other stakeholders who are like, this thing has to go out on time, right? So I need to work between all of these groups to come up with a solution that's gonna be uh, uh, advantageous to everybody, right? Finding the wins, right? And that's something that you've done at a, a HBCU experience. You know, sometimes you, what you mean my bill's not paid? And you get into that financial aid office and you figure yes. it out, right? <laughs> that, is, that is something that happens. Um, uh, but but in addition to that, right, like I, I went to school uh, and I don't think I mentioned, but I, I, I did uh, theater arts. So mm -hmm. I graduated Bowie State um, with a uh, theater arts concentration, acting and directing. Um, mm -hmm. As you all can see, I am not uh, 
in front of the camera. I'm, I'm very much uh, uh, working uh, behind the scenes. Um, but I can say that having those experiences, having being put out there, which is what happens in a performing arts setting, or even when fine arts is being judica adjudicated, right? Right. Your whole soul is out there, right? You've worked on this piece. You've worked on this, you know, this, 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 uh, uh, this monologue for all this time. And you get on the stage and you say it, and then your director can come in and be like, that was terrible, do it again. Oh, that sucked. And you just <laughs> eat those, right? And you do it so much that you are prepared to take risks because you know the worst thing that can happen is a no. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like yeah. there's so many students who have, don't get that opportunity um, to get that criticism, that critical uh, uh, influence that they don't know how to handle it, right? And so us having a little more, uh, our skin thickened a little bit is something that, you know, prepares us, you know, prepares you for the resumes and the turndowns, right? Because you're just like, okay, this opportunity may not be for me. I'm gonna keep rolling. Or this is not for me. I'm gonna keep rolling. So I'm just like, at that, at those points, um, you start to uh, see how much uh, that, that the, the development of your craft helps you not to focus on you know, some of the negative, but focus on always getting better and better at what you're doing, right? And that just, that pays dividends, especially in this kind of arena, right? Like um, we've got apps that launch and, 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 and shows that launch and sometimes stuff bombs. Sometimes people don't appreciate it. Sometimes people don't like it. Sometimes it wasn't delivered in the right way. And being able to shift and pivot quickly is something that you learn in these arenas. And I think they're getting used to, and I, I, I say they, I mean like, companies in general are getting used to the benefit that they get when they bring in people who have had these experiences, right? And even if it, if it wasn't like an HBCU experience, maybe you just had a rough, you know, maybe you came from our, our traditional communities, right? And you had to hustle there. And I think there's so much power in that ability to keep rolling and keep moving when coupled with the opportunity, it's, it's killer. Right, we have so much opportunity. We, we're so so potent, right? Our, our our ability to succeed is so so great that I think that if we just you know continue to use those nuggets that we get, right? I have nuggets, and it, and I have to shoot a nugget from uh, <laughs> Dr. Gross uh, <laughs> uh, because Chana says I'm one of the first people she met. That is not by accident. Uh, Dr. Gross was our uh, honors program coordinator. And she, mm -hmm. after I came in, she was like, okay, now it's you all's responsibility to make sure that this next cohort gets what they need so that they can transition and do what they need to do too. Mm -hmm. So then I met the next group. I helped them get their classes scheduled. I told them, you know, hey, look, you got to schedule your classes early so you don't have to come in for them 8 a.m. classes because nobody wants right. that life. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> and, um, but again, all of those, those nuggets, those lessons stick with you. And then you're able to pivot and able to, to, to and they'll, they'll talk about you. And, and if I were to code switch, you know, you know, you're just so great under pressure or, you know, uh, things just don't, you know, you're not just affected by a lot of things and you're able to, able to just pivot. And that's code for, you know, how to hustle, you know, how to get it done. Right. You know, how to, uh, you know, move, roll with the punches. So, uh, those are things that you cannot take for granted um, from, from the experience at an HBCU or out of a program like this. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I wanna give, before we take questions from our, um, our guests and look towards questions on our Facebook audience, Professor Teo, I know that you wanted to chime in a little bit about this as well, because I know that you had your own, um, you know, kind of difficulties in terms of like when you were at Morgan and the limitations that were available at that time. Yeah. And, and it seemed like it kind of, you know, start planting the seed. We're like, oh, I'm gonna make sure, you know, this ain't gonna happen again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so just, just what David said and what everyone else has said, it's made me really think, not to get too deep and spiritual on you, but you know, this this is a, it's a spiritual thing. It's a deep love I have for HBCUs. And, mm -hmm. and you mentioned the struggle, the hustle, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about just ancestors. I mean, you know, uh, 1865 and all the other you know, years, a lot of our HBCUs were created that our, our ancestors have been hustling. We've been hustling since we left Africa, right? And mm. so, it, it, and, it, and it's a real, it, it's, a thi it's a thing that I like to study in, in our class. I mean, whether it's, you know, Greek life or whether it's marching bands or whether it's, again, our music, uh, we just dope, we just, we just dope. You know what I'm saying? Like across the board. And now other people are studying us 
except us. And just kind of going back to Morgan, um, you know, uh, Morgan, I, I was one of those protesting, you know, lock the chains of the administration building. Morgan, we protested <laughs> not to be part of the University System of Maryland. And, you know, and, and so social, you know, social, social justice has always been a key part of, of everything that we do. As a matter of fact, I want to say most social justice move, we talk about you know, all the great leaders somehow are connected to an HBCU or the black church, which is a whole another institution. Yeah. But and the geek community too. Yeah, absolutely. I, but but mm -hmm. this whole thing of, of hustle and struggle and you know making something out of nothing, you know, I mean if it's if it's soul food, if it's hip hop, if it's jazz, if it's gospel, if it's blues, those are the things that fascinate me as a as an artist, filmmaker, and as a professor to get our students studying these things. Um, mm -hmm. And, and again, even with the creation of the hip hop minor, that that was a, that wasn't an easy road. I got a lot of hatred on the way up, but now it's like, whoa, you got a minor in hip hop. My right. yeah. remember someone said, "Why do you want a course in hip hop? Like why?" You know. But right. again, I'll, you know, I, I make these connections. I want students to look at these connections between music and art and culture. And I'm glad everyone has touched upon this um, in ways that you know. Again, we don't we don't always uh, respect our 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 culture sometimes, and really really honor our stories and honor what where we come from, you know, as people of African descent. So that's just something that I find exciting. And, you know, it's interesting with with HBCUs. Uh, and, and I went to, you know, I went to grad school too, but it's like, I'm always going to go back, you know, before COVID. <laughs> right. you know, Morgan, I'm Morgan State homecoming, like I'm going back to homecoming. I go every single year, like, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It, it literally is. It's in such an experience that, you know, I, I feel a little bad for the students currently under this this COVID situation, they don't get that that true experience to step yeah. in and the, you know, look, look, brother, Kane's drop, brother Allen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the bad food, the, you know, the lady and, and, and you know, financial aid. It's like that whole, exp I would not trade anything in the world. I'm so blessed that my son just graduated from Bowie State last fall. Nice, I, got a, nice. I got a 13 year old. I'm like, I'm trying to push him. Morgan, his mother went to Bowie State too. So as long as he goes to an HBC, I'm happy. But the, right. you just cannot <laughs> place that experience. And, and so I treasure all of these things. And again, in a certain the sense of art and, and, and visual culture and theater and music, I like students mm -hmm. to study these things and say, like, yo, this is this is a part of our culture. And it's and it's diasporic. It's across the, it's across the planet. And that's mm -hmm. the things that we like to do. And, and not to jump, I, I put, I'm gonna put my toe in Afrofuturism real quick, real quick. Oh, yeah, because please. That's something that we like to look at. And my students are very excited about you know looking. Uh, you know, Afrofuturism, as compared to science fiction, you know, it's it's about, you know, in, in, in the African sense, there's no, the time is, is a continuum. This past, present, and future all exists like now. It's a circle. It's not like the beginning and then the middle and the end. Like, no, mm -hmm. it's, it's all cyclical. Like, episode seven of Lovecraft Country, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that is what I'm talking about in terms of, of, of really looking at our culture from the viewpoint of, of the African and African-American, Afro-Caribbean, Afro-Latinx, -Latin, Latin Latina experience. Mm -hmm. and brought these traditions with us and then but these these are the things that that we try to focus on in our program um in the in the in not only just bcdma but throughout the department of fine performing arts you know be it be it in theater be it in music um be it in visual art or be it or dance you know yeah so this is this is something that we we try to focus on but again just as i'm listening to you all i'm just saying yeah there's there's nothing like that experience and i wouldn't trade it for the world and i can't wait for COVID to be able to go back to home <laughs> like we're, we're, we're so like my, the, my I was triggered. we're struggling like we can't go to homecoming like oh my yeah. god <laughs> but you know when it's I safe, was triggered when you said financial aid right. <laughs> right like I was like y'all <laughs> cried y'all cried, <laughs> cried in that office too <laughs> don't forget the lady that helped you out if I that's late okay yeah right. always a lady the but the, the, the funny thing is it's a specific cry. Like you walk by someone crying, you say, right. oh, dang, they right. went to financial all A office yep. today. Like you always <laughs> knew. Matt, what I really, respect, listen, Matt, what respect, I really feel bad about is that trying to go to Geo. And I say mad respect to all financial aid, everyone. Look, administrative assistant secretary, I love them all because I couldn't have got through Morgan State without these wonderful people. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. And, and really. I feel you bad that you guys haven't gone to Geo instead. Y'all going to Morgan. Y'all need to come to G Ho. What's y'all? What's y'all deal? <laughs> it's called G Ho for a reason. What's going that, on? Is, that is too funny. And I think that that's something that has been a, a recurring topic of conversation about HBCUs is the lack of um, resources and in particular the disproportionate funding and the um, systemic racism that has taken place that has ultimately shortchanged pretty much all of our HBCUs um, since they've been founded. And, um, you know, thanks to a handful of some substantial 
private donations, um, the game has really changed. It really has. And, um, but I'm hoping, I'm hopeful that it will be a catalyst to, um, to, you know, building up HBCU so that we don't have to wait for some billionaire to be nice to us and throw us a bone, and, you know, and, so and I, if I can, I, I don't want to interrupt, but I, I have to, no. because I, there's, <laughs> there's this, there's this preconceived notion that's not based on fact about the legitimacy of the HBCU uh, and academia. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, I've tasted it in, mm -hmm. in certain arenas, uh, you know, especially coming over to the West Coast where there are HBCUs, you know. Right. And so it's, it's wild when you get into these spaces um, from an HBCU and you realize, wow, um, I'm on a level <laughs> playing field. If not, my ground's a little higher than yours in certain aspects right. and certain yeah. ways. And and I, I challenge students, especially if they're feeling like, you know, if they've been there at HBCU and they're feeling like, well, maybe my school, you know, maybe I need to transfer into another school. Maybe, I, you know, um, I want you to consider the alternative idea. We're, we're talking geek stuff, right? So look at this alternative reality where um, because they're at these very prestigious schools, mm -hmm. the prestige has caught them lazy, caught them off guard, caught them yep. being the same over and over. And without any diversity, you don't get any new ideas. You don't get any new perspectives. And those yep. perspectives don't go to reinforce anything that you're learning or doing or growing. Whereas mm -hmm. we are trying to prove ourselves consistently. And when you're mm -hmm. trying to prove yourself, you're tempering yourself, mm -hmm. getting better, getting better, getting better, getting better compared to, you know, I'm already at the top. Uh, but I, ha I don't have anything to compare my top to because everyone keeps saying that my Ivy League top is the top, right? right. So then when I get into an actual arena with like uh, a prison debate club, I lose. Right. No right. shots. You know, I don't mean shoot, you know, shooting shots or, or shots fired or anything, but that, that's the reality of it. So uh, I don't want students to go away thinking that I need to be in this mm -hmm. other arena. You just need to recognize mm -hmm. that as long as you're consistently pushing and growing, um, you're going to be on level playing field, right? You're, you're mm -hmm. going to get what's yours. So I think that, that, that's, that was just, that was just on my heart. I'm sorry, but, uh, there's, there's been some concern about our lack of, uh, resources. And though mm -hmm. it is, can you imagine where we would be if we had equal resources? At that Say point, that again. Right. Say that again. Hooker. I feel like. Yes. I you're called a hooker now. Yes. I'm yes. sorry. <laughs> Dude, I, I thought that was what we were calling him. No, we like are. We are. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I was so disappointed when I started working with Ivy Leaguers and stuff like that. And when I started my page, I was working full time and doing my mm -hmm. page. And people were like, how could you find the time? Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yo, these white people are untalented. <laughs> so like I would do work. <laughs> In a day or so, y'all, I'm not lying. I would do my work and this is my day job, not like editing and stuff. I, I did a lot of like, I was directing uh, a full, like um, I was managing a team, blah, 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 blah. And just the work I would do in like, let's say 20 hours was the equivalent of 60 hours of work for like mm -hmm. my counterpart. And I was, and they would come to me like, oh my God, Francis, I just don't know. How did you find this? Da, da, da. And I'm like, you're not resourceful. Like, it's just small things that we learned from being at an HBCU that haven't learned on their own. Mm -hmm. And I was just disappointed because I always felt like, to your point, Hooker, like, I didn't have these resources. Bennett is tiny, y'all, less than a thousand students. And I felt like, y'all, I didn't have these resources. How am I going to compete? And I always like was going above and beyond. And then I got into the workforce and I was like, y'all, I killed myself. I took away pieces of my college experience mm. to compete with people who don't know how to work, don't wear, don't know how to dress for work. Let me put that out there. Cause y'all go <laughs> be disappointed sometimes. Uh, <laughs> that was the first thing I was like, why wow, everybody got those fairies in here? What is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a full array about it. Um, you but it, it, it was just very, like. Yeah, you you got, to work so yo, oh, you absolutely. Got to let absolutely. Out 
yo, in my in my so work, and that's overall, y'all. I'm a nerd do, through and through. I'm about rules. I'm about like anything worth doing is worth doing overdoing. Like, yeah. why put your name on anything that's not fire? You you know what I'm saying? And I would work mm-hmm. with people, and I'm like, this 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 what you doing? That that's what you want to say yes to? And yeah, yeah, it was it was just crazy. Yeah. No, I, I you. know they didn't like you because I did similar stuff like that and they hated me. <laughs> the yeah, yeah. Why, why, why are you still work? Why are you still here? You've been here for 10 hours. I'm like, well, I'm trying to finish what we're doing. They're, they're like, just, just do it tomorrow. Just do it tomorrow. <laughs> right, exactly. You're doing too much. You're making me look too much. Exactly. Yeah. But then that translates, right? That translates to your own work. You learning, you learning that work ethic, you mm-hmm. having connections in that space where like people remember you like Frances works hard. I need to connect with her again or get her for, uh, you know, people remember those things. Mm-hmm. And I agree that like HBCUs have this stigma of like, of being like rinky dink and stuff just because we fought for financial aid. But I'm like, that has nothing to do. This being in the HBCU was the first time that I was not a magical Negro, and it was really hard for me, y'all. Because like being in a space <laughs> where everybody was black and talented was yeah. hard. I had yeah. to. It was a new, different, competitive edge because right. when I was competing against white people and Latino people or white facing Latinos, I'd be like, first thing they see is I'm black, so automatically they're looking at me. So if I did a mediocre to a good job. Mm-hmm. I was automatically going to be pushed to the top. And mm-hmm. then I was in a pool of nothing but black people. So being right. mediocre or okay would not cut it. You not right. you go to the rush, a hundred people at rush. Yeah. Why, why are you special? Why? Right. And they why only pick and, they only pick in 10 of y'all. So, so exactly. <laughs> it was just it was just a competitive it was a competitive fire. Five of the oh. legacy already, so they really they only picking five of y'all. <laughs> Okay. Sure. We ain't have none. They wasn't. None. They was like, I don't care who your auntie is. I don't care if your auntie pledged this chapter. Let yeah. me see your receipts. That's what they said <laughs> <Yeah>. to me. <laughs> I'm getting triggered yeah. up in this mug. Uh, you feel it. You feel it <laughs> down here. Professor, you feel it out down here because it was like, oh, so being black is not enough. Yeah. Drop no, really. And it, and it, it, it's a beautiful thing because it forces you to seek your identity outside of just being a black person, and it, and it humanizes us, right? Because being black is no longer like a caricature or a element that makes you look cool. And then you have, there's this surmounting pressure. Like I know friends who will go to Europe and like there was so much pressure. For, if you're the one black person at an all white party, there is so much pressure to be the life of the party. <laughs> it's not even funny. Um, you and, know how to dance too. Yeah, you better it's know how to You better be willing it's to teach hard them. To entertain them. You no, better be willing to teach them too. And it's funny because I've had conversations, um, particularly with like black Ivy Leaguers, black Ivy League alum, and their experience is much is very much aligned with ours in the sense that they have to constantly prove themselves because they are the one black you know face on a campus that was probably built by slaves. You know, so it's like that whole stigma, like I have a friend um, and she's a partner of ours as well, Tall and Kel, and she would do job interviews and they would like question her degree because she went to Yale. So they're like, like, did you really go to Yale? Like, really? You know, so that whole... Yeah. That's the yeah. real BS right there. Yeah. And it, it happens to, to Black people who graduate from Ivy League institutions a lot. So, um, and then of course, when they're in the yard, it's like, oh, you're automatically the affirmative action pick. You're clearly the, the affirmative action pick. And those are just things that we, you know, don't have, those are like struggles that we don't have to face. And I realized looking back how much I took it for granted um, being at an HBCU. So I want to offer, oh, we got a comment from C.S. Sherman. A friend of mine who taught high schoolers once told me, these students do enough to get into an HBCU and think they are doing something. Uh, Hold up. Oh, they're saying this is the mindset that we're against. So that stigma of HBCUs and, um, and, you know, that a lot of people, I think, 
so often focus on the social aspects of it that they forget that we are breeding geniuses at these institutions. We are breeding some of the most brilliant minds, much in the same way with the with Greek letter, Black Greek letter organizations like, yeah, we step, we party, we do all that, but guess what? We're changing the world at the same time. So don't sleep, you know, um, but I wanna give an opportunity for anyone. We have a couple of guests in the Zoom room with us and I wanna offer them the opportunity to ask some questions if they have any. So for those of you who are there, I don't wanna call you out by name, but it, um, please feel free. I'm gonna give you the opportunity to unmute yourself and ask any questions that you may have before we uh, start to, we got about another 15 minutes. This has been really good. They so quiet today. Okay. Unmute yourself. I see you, so don't get put on the spot. I'm just yeah, don't get put on the spot. I got your names on my little list here. <laughs> They've been absorbing so much information. <laughs> that is all, these, is all is all these different testimonies. They're absorbing it. That's true. Um, I think I have one question that I will um, ask you all before um, that might get them going or might close us out, depending on how things go. But, um, and some of you tapped into it as well, but what are your fandoms? And you can be as generic or as specific as you like to be, but um, like, what are the fandoms that you love, that you typically indulge in? And, um, and what kind of like draws you into those fandoms? Um, Honestly, I love every fandom, but anime <laughs> is number one. Anime it's is definitely tier. number one. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's how, that's how I met uh miss skittles you know what i'm saying urban anime lounge mm -hmm. so I, I, I anime is definitely number one but i love all fandoms uh i did like what tio was talking about with the afrofuturism i was looking into trying out some uh cosplays that are like inspired by afrofuturism right. you know but um that they just look so difficult when i see the art and i see all the pieces that go into <laughs> like the art like it looks hella difficult. So, yeah. but I was gonna try this year to actually dive into one. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think you tapped into something um, really important too. Is like uplifting independent artists, especially in Afrofuturism, because we focus so much on the big two, like Disney, Marvel, DC, Time Warner, um, or Warner Media now. But, um, you know, there are so many like independent creators who are out here, like writing whole stories and they're really good. You know, they're really good stories. And, you know, if I think, uh, I don't know about y'all, no shade to the fandom, but if I see another Batman movie, I'm gonna lose my collective, <laughs> you know what. Not gonna so. lie, I, I don't <laughs> buy, don't, don't I, on, I don't, don't, I don't Batman. buy the Batman, Batman was movie. pioneering when yeah. Nerd was like completely blackballing. He, so Batman he, was always been around. So don't a hey, he raised don't be hating. but not just that. But I really love that now Batman is turning into something where Batman is realizing that he's not good, right? Mm -hmm. Like on all the new comic books, the White Knight run and stuff like that. Everybody's like Batman, like you, you need help. Maybe you should be in Arkham <laughs> with us. And I really like that it's <laughs> nuance and interest. Yeah, what, it's I, can't, I can't believe what I'm hearing. Oh I my God, Joe! Please, please. First of all, first of all, man, venture. Please don't don't follow me, baby. You do not want to follow me, baby. Look, you will not like my page. The Skittles, no. <laughs> you do not gonna like I my page. I can't believe this man single-handedly pulled up the whole Batman city. I can't believe this man single-handedly cleaned up the whole the city. <laughs> Lost his parents. Here we go. Just, oh my goodness. I can't believe it. Okay, uh, before I go into more fandoms, which is obvious, um, <laughs> I will say this about so my entire page, y'all. I guess I didn't elaborate the context of comics, anime, and <laughs> I dissect it as a black woman. So things like Batman, where people like he saves the city by himself. I'm like, did he though? Because he's a billionaire who could fund the city and turn it to the suburbs instead of just beating up clowns with his own hands. Right, and, you know, petty, yeah, petty crap, issues. <laughs> these, are, these are whole super beings that he's fighting. He's just a regular person. He is rich, but he's just a regular person. <laughs> there are people that fight fighting super, super beings, beings that in the area that he can call upon. Like, they don't truly need him, right? The Flash is around. Superman is around. And none of them could still capture Joker. 
They oh they lead it to Batman. They scared of Batman. <laughs> they scared of Batman. Ain't none, none, none of nobody touching. Y'all, none this is not a Batman jokes. debate. We need to educate. <laughs> But we got a I will pretty, say this, right? We got a pretty boy, pretty girl movie. fight night right now. Yeah, I'm not trying to get on Batman because I love Batman and I was raised on it. Like my mom jokes that like I couldn't, um, I wouldn't go to bed as a kid, and I was a child of a blur. So like even with mm. my dad, that's how we connected was through Batman and stuff like that. I feel like I'm one of the only people who really loves Batman and Robin because everybody's hung up on the, the nipples. But for me, in terms of what. <laughs> <laughs> they did have a nipple too. They did. I don't know why. Why everybody trip about the nipples? Nipples is there. I was a kid when it came out. <laughs> yeah. You get what I'm saying? I feel like I was the target audience when it came out. It was a really campy movie. So me being like nine when it came out, mm-hmm. it was the greatest thing I'd ever seen. Yes, Arnold Schwarzenegger, yes. y'all forget, was yes, yes. the Rock. He but, was, but George he, Clooney was the driest Batman. He was ever. the Rock at the time. He was. He was I mean, he was such y'all. a dry Batman. And George and Clooney was the hottest David white boy David. out there, y'all. Yeah, okay, but anyway, <laughs> my Lord, it, 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 uh, look at all the black men collective like look of, of like. But you know what's so funny, know? y'all? And this is what I mean, and this is what I found I could capitalize on. And we talked yeah. about entrepreneurship earlier. This is how I make my money, right? I said <laughs> one thing that triggered venture, and he went on a tangent off of it, right? <laughs> yeah. so, and, and what does that? And then what does that happen to me? Wait, 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 wait. wait. But then what does that happen to me, right? So now you want a tangent on my page because it's something I said and truly believe, right? And now I show that to a company, pay me cheese to wear your shirt, pay me cheese to do this, to talk about this, because mm-hmm. no matter what I say, people are going to engage. And I think that's interesting that people need to understand is understanding what your niche is, what's mm-hmm. marketable to companies, because now we're direct to consumer. And now you can, I make way more money. I, why I go to basketball? Uh, you know, it's just like once I realized that, I'm like, you know, I'm, I, I did this leading, thing. Leading the witness, Your Honor. Yeah, <laughs> but either way, I'm so here for all of this. Either um, way, I think in terms of like what fandom I like, it evolves. It evolves because I'm a person. I love being thrown into a world. Afrofuturism, Children and Blood and Bone. When those two books came out. I was mm-hmm. like, yo, this is fuego. I think that's why people like yeah. Black Panther as well, too. Yes. Because there was yeah, every yeah. aspect was covered, right? There were dances, there was food, there was cl- like there was a full immersive ex- experience. When Harry mm-hmm. Potter came out, I was his age when he got the letter. I was a year younger. So then at 10, I packed my bag ready for my letter because it was a world <laughs> that was written, that was <laughs> written for me. And I think that's the fandom that I chase. And I think that's why people get so engaged because I chase fandoms that immerse you and get people so connected. Like, yo, Venture, you're so connected to Batman, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I really Batman like that is you brought Musk, up. You know Batman, right? Yeah. But but that story, that story connects to you. Mm. Right, right. No, but I, I was uh listen to what you're saying about black panther and one thing i loved is that they gave grace jones that little shout out when they made the joke yeah and, um, right. yeah she was always big on afrofuturism she was. You know, so mm-hmm. like I, I really liked that you know they incorporated at least a little shout out to her for being yeah. like a pioneer of that you know yeah facts mm-hmm. that's real that's real yeah. so it's just funny how things tie together and yeah batman you know that's my boy man like but, but I mean, to a degree of what you're saying, I do agree with because in the comics now and even the show, like you wouldn't have Harley Quinn without Batman. And a lot of people who don't watch the Harley Quinn show don't know that they deal with like a lot of mental issues. Yeah, and they, they talk about things like, you know, anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder, and like how to improve yourself. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, comics back in the day didn't really have those things, mm-hmm. you know, not, not self-improvement, but- right. The new comics have it now, so like right. I do Why reckon do you think that, like is? that. Anime incorp- but Why anime do does it a lot. Is? Yeah, because white anime people does. stop right, right, mm-hmm. stop writing all the comics, and now there's like nuance and different stories. Interesting. I think people they I think it's okay kind of tapping into a market where you see that there are a lot of people who read comics who might deal with things like depression, anxiety. 
because being a nerd, you know, you could go through a lot of anxiety being a nerd alone. Mm -hmm. So when you have like movies like Endgame, everybody's focused on like the overall picture. But if you look at Thor's arc, that's completely dealing with like a depression and anxiety. And then he had yeah. to overcome that when he talked to his mother. Right. So you see a lot of people connecting with these different arcs. And then what do you know? They start making comic books directly dealing with these issues. Yeah. And you even see, um, you know, in Black Panther, he goes through the same thing, the loss of his dad, grief and all those various things that we face in life, you know, and, and all the cultural aspects of it and, and put and incorporating the beliefs like African tradition of, of the afterlife and all of those various things. We it's are- It's interesting that you, oh, go we, ahead, I'm sorry. No, I'm saying we got like three minutes left. So I wanna make sure y'all shout out your social media and stuff. This has been <laughs> such a beautiful and rich conversation. I'm so proud um, to have, you know, been a part of this. But please, by all means, shout out your social medias. Of course, HBCU Con, um, Con HBCU on Twitter, HBCU Con on all other platforms except Twitch. It's official HBCU Con. But please shout yourselves out. Uh, Frankie, go right ahead. Yeah, you guys can find me at, at Fantastic Frankie, F R A N K E Y, like the key to your heart. Um, <laughs> or you can find me on Twitter at mm -hmm. Fanboy Fighter. Um, every time I give them my socials, I like to remind everyone huge trigger warnings. If you are sensitive or particularly connected to comics or anime, you will not like my comment. You will not like my content. <laughs> um, things I said about Batman is the night that is on there. So uh, <laughs> I always like to put that. <laughs> always like to wow, put that just, just watch. The fanboy fighter. I gotta do it. Yep. Go ahead, Miss Skittles. Yeah. Count yourself yeah. out. Um, you can find me on uh, Instagram and Facebook, um, Ms. Skittles, TR underscore cosplay. Um, also, if you want to, you know, check out what we got going on at Urban Anime Lounge, you can uh, find us on Facebook and Instagram and a whole lot of other stuff. But <laughs> the link is in the bio and also the Blurred Spectrum podcast. You can also find us on Facebook yes. and Instagram. And, and all all the places where you listen to your podcast yes ma'am <laughs> mm -hmm. all right hook shout yourself out sure um you can find me on all things uh hooktastic that's uh h00k-tastic um on twitter facebook um mm -hmm. and twitch um and you can find me and the missus uh uh on uh, love usagi so that's going to be uh, oh. L-U-V-U-S-A-G-I. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yes, it is exactly what you think. Um, and, and you can also catch me every other Saturday um, on a, a, a small cast show that I do called Dear Allies. Mm -hmm. um, that's on Facebook called Dear Allies. And it's just a, a, a opportunity that, that was built out out of the summer to uh, help equip allies with the uh, tools mm -hmm. and resources that they need to uh, start uh, being real ones, right? And uh, uh, supporting Not systemic, uh, uh, dismantling systemic oppression, so. Right. Good deal. Venture Bros, go ahead and we'll close out with you, Professor Tio. Um, so yeah, you can find me at, on Instagram, Venture Bros. Uh, you can find me at Facebook, Venture Bros Cosplay. Twitter, Venture Bros, and TikTok Venture Bros. Oh, yeah, I forgot about TikTok. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, trying, to, trying to get with the times. Everybody on TikTok. I, <laughs> I, I got to give a shout out to Miss Skittle. She the one taught me how to use it. So. Facts. Facts. All right, Professor Tio, shout out to VCBMA. And you're a filmmaker in your own right. So yeah. shout yourself yeah. out. Oh, absolutely. So, of course, uh, at VCDMA and my my studio, Visual Jazz, at Soul Cinematic, I'll put it in the chat. I wanted to make sure I thank uh, the Black History Month Committee and the Department yes. of History and Government, all the people that, because we are part of a, a, a entire month of Black History Month. You know, we celebrate it every day, every year, uh, every day of the year, 365. Uh, mm -hmm. But I also wanted to put a, a quick plug in. Again, uh, we touched on Afro. We dipped our toe in Afrofuturism. I got to plug my sister, Itasha Womack. She was our guest speaker. She has a wonderful book on Afrofuturism. Matter of fact, she might be a good panelist for HBCU Con. Um, yeah. But Itasha Womack is just a wonderful sister who is in Chicago. And, okay. Uh, this is hey. a oh, yeah, shout out town. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <And> thank, thanks <laughs> to all of you all for being a part of this. And you know, we hope to do more collaborative things with HBCU Con and all of you all in the future. Mm -hmm. And um, stay tuned. Thank you much. Yeah.
This is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. Um, I just want to thank you all again. Um, thank you, VCDMA. Thank you to our panelists, our co-moderator. Thank you to the Department of Fine and Performing Arts, to the Department of History, um, and Bowie State University as a whole, as, as an alumna. It is just truly an honor, an honor and a privilege to, um, to have be, been able to bridge um, my baby, our, our baby, with, um, with our beloved alma mater. And it really is a labor of love. Um, Bowie students, we got HBCU students all up and through our staff um, and, and non-HBCU. So I just wanted to really echo the fact that um, the community is here and it is here for you. It is here for folks who went to a HBCU. It is here for folks who wish they went to a HBCU um, and for folks who, who want to really hone in on that inner geek that is inside of, and that inner superhero, quite frankly, that lives in all of us. So once again, I just wanna thank you all so much for your time and also um, announce that we are gonna be having a program for Women's History Month. Um, still working on confirming the date, but it'll more than likely be the week of the 24th. Um, we're gonna be doing our panel, She Saves the Day and um, our virtual event. Thank you, yeah, Tiff was on there. Um, but um, our inaugural virtual convention is gonna be happening April 17th through 24th. So be on the lookout for that. We're gonna have all types of awesome virtual panels and seminars, performances, um, cosplay contest, fashion show, you name it. It's all gonna be there for you all. And I'm looking forward to, to seeing you all there. So take care, have a great night and you all be well and be nerdy. Thank you. Peace some blessings, y'all take care. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Perfect. So it looks like we're off. Yes, we are. Thank you, Wendell. Thank you, yes. Sammy. That was so wonderful, y'all. I'm just so I'm